Good evening. Welcome to As I See It, A Blind Woman's View. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the second half of a show that we started last month, and I'm so excited that it was so interesting and so informative that we had to do another show. My name is Andrea Judici. I'm your host, and I have with me my guide dog, who I choose not to introduce for our focus as a team and, and also for his safety. And she'll just like go like... She's like, I, I can go straight, but there's grass here, and I can just cut across this grass and go shorter <laughs> distance. It saves you time. <laughs> it's just interesting, like, how she's picked up on that. It's really, it's And it's just, only been, like, a semester that she's been doing it for. Like, she hasn't even been doing it for, like, six months, and she just picked it up. Yeah, it's, it's so fascinating to me. Um, th I'm so sorry that I missed asking you that question. Okay, no, so fine. now back to access. Who wants to talk about an access denial and what, how they, obviously, we all have different ones, and sometimes the situation um, informs how we deal with it, but who wants to tell me about an access issue that they might have faced? I, I'm, I'm kind of interested in this because I talk to a lot of people about access problems, and most people claim to not have many. I seem to have lots. <laughs> <laughs> maybe lots it's not the dog, maybe it's you. <laughs> <laughs> it might be far better if they're like, pal, we don't want you here, like the dog could stay. Um, yeah, I really have a, I've had a lot. So I've had lots of problems in Ubers, uh, once when I was in New York trying to get to an uh, a, my airplane and, 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 and almost missed it. Mm -hmm. um, Uber has been very good at calling and saying they're concerned and saying it's a big deal to them, but it seems to keep happening. Mm -hmm. I've had problems um, in restaurants and, you know, I, I think this is uh, somewhere where uh, I've evolved to some may disagree. I've tried to evolve. I used to get very upset. I still sometimes do and, you know, would, would just yell or, you know, but now I found that it's much, or, so, or I just go to the table. Just say, get, get the police, <laughs> you know. The police will come and the restaurants were like, now I really try to, you know, it, and I think this is more appropriate, try to explain to them. I carry the ADA uh, regulations and I, you know, try to explain to them. A lot of times, it's beaten into them by the health inspectors that they're not allowed to have a dog, especially in uh, restaurants where people may be sp speaking English as a second language and it's not, they're not quite as familiar with this. Okay. They're told they'll lose their license if they let a dog in and you get some person coming in saying, we're bringing our dog. And so it, it's an education thing. It is frustrating. It's not like this is a new law. Um, I think one of the, the most interesting times I was... Uh, denied was I, I travel to Germany uh, every year or two for a conference and I've had very little problems in Europe, surprisingly. So I'd, I'd gone all over Germany, had no problems and decided to go. I heard that there was one of these eating in the dark restaurants run by <laughs> some blind people. And I went in there and they said, no, you can't come in with the dog. And I said, are, are you serious? Is this like a joke? Or, you know, <laughs> I've been all over. This is run by blind. They said, well, people could step on the dog and, and whatever, and they could stay in the office. And I said, screw it. I'm, I'm not going. Um, you know, don't take my business elsewhere. Um, so that was, I think, the, the most challenging. But I mean, there's this, this stories, you know, just recently, someone in Maine was thrown off a plane. Uh, because of a service dog, and it's, you know, there are, it, it does, it happens, I think, quite a bit, at least from my experience, but as I said, I might be an outlier. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, Steve? The hard part about it, at least for me, is that it's happened infrequently. So when it happens, I'm not prepared. You know, it might be a year, and I guess as humans, we just kind of get used to what we think is the norm. I couldn't tell you. You know what's going to happen after this show. This <laughs> You're I'm going to get denied. I'm going to get denied every place I go. I tend to go to a lot of the same places over and over again, so that's probably why. Oh, yeah. But um, I haven't had issue with it. I expected to have an issue with it last week, but I didn't. Um, the last time that I think I had issue, I believe I was up in New Hampshire, and I went to go into a bakery. And I walked in the door and the woman started screaming at me, like, don't take another step in here with that dog. And I said, well, I can bring the dog in here. It's a guide dog and my manager doesn't allow dogs. And I said, unfortunately, your manager doesn't know the law. <laughs> and as I'm having this conversation with her, my friends were kind of staking out the joint and they discovered that everything in the bakery looked really gross. 
So their way to deal with it was they turned around and said, all the food in here looks disgusting. We're not getting anything. Let's get out of here. Mm. And I kind of had to go with them because they were driving the car. <laughs> so I just said, have a good day and left. And I think one of them may have gone on Facebook and like posted that that happened to us. How about you, Gannon? Uh, I've only had one. I've had a couple. Oh, I had a couple. It's mostly been like people that don't like English is not their first language. Like I went to a in like where I live in Connecticut, I went to like a I think it was a Chinese or Japanese restaurant and like they didn't know at first and then I explained to them and they were like fine with it but I it's just people like don't know like some people just don't know the law and you have to educate them it's interesting for me because I when I was you know 16 years old and um, sometimes when we're younger we get a, a little bit um, thinking things are always going to be black and white and there's only going to be one answer. And so I always thought, I will never walk away. If I'm denied access, I will never walk away. Well, sometimes it just doesn't make sense. You don't have time to deal with it. Or you're with um, someone in your family who's going to get so overwrought by the situation that it's not worth dealing with them and it. So I have found that there are times where I just walk away from it. There are times where I have been willing and very happy to stay and call the police. And there are times where I've walked away and shown up the next day with 10 guide dog users and been like, okay, <laughs> I'm back. That's a good, um, that's a good idea. Um, <laughs> it just, it, it really depends on, on, on the situation. Yeah. I always try to educate. It's interesting to me. Um, I, and, and I do find that I get, I have an opinion. Sometimes I'll, I'll think, oh, this is going to be a problem, and it's not. I was denied access at a deli in, in Morristown, New Jersey, where the very first ever guide dog school in the country called the Seeing Eye is located. And they were, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me, right? I'm being denied yeah. access in Morristown, New Jersey. Um, but I remember very distinctly a restaurant in San Francisco. It was a small restaurant. It, was a, it happened to be a Chinese restaurant. And I went in, and they didn't know about the dog, but they were very willing to listen to me and they when they were all very curious a lot of people came out well by the end of the meal they're out there bringing her water they're asking me <laughs> they said to me so can she have a fortune cookie and i said well she you know you can give me one and i'll give it to her when we get home they gave me a shopping bag full of <laughs> we would go in there and she was treated like a queen i mean it was it was so cool because just through her behavior and this happened to me at a at a restaurant in virginia it was a um, indian restaurant it's happened to me um in fact Ironically for me, the places that I've been done at access are places like that, that deli in Morristown, an IHOP in San Rafael, again, a guy dug school town, a, a <laughs> town where there's, really, seriously, these are the places that I'm having this problem? Um, but it does happen. But I noticed that the most important thing I needed to do for myself was to give myself permission to realize that there isn't one answer for me. That depending on the situation and who I'm with and the time I have, that is how I inform how I respond. And I don't know if that's right or wrong, but that's how I, that's how I do it. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's that. Um, I, I uh, no, go. I think Steve brought up a good point too, that um, if you do have a problem and it doesn't get resolved in a way that you really feel is right, then use social media. You know, let yes, you, social media yeah. is a really good tool now. Use social media to, to point that out because that, that will, you know, that can really affect a restaurant or a business. Yeah. Yep. And uh, they're sensitive to that. And they may not be, they may be far more sensitive to that than some random blind customer that comes with a dog and tells them they're breaking the law. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's very true. And, and that's a very powerful tool. And, you know, 30 years ago when I started working guide dogs, there wasn't social media. Yeah. And I think it's a really good tool now. And, good. Uh, Going off of that, I'm actually like on Facebook. I'm a, yeah, I'm a part of, a group for that, like basically just for like every, like a lot of guide dog users and there's always like people like posting like stuff like that happened to them that shouldn't happen like there was one person that posted something about like where they were denied with uber and like it was a really bad experience but it's it just using social media in that aspect is like it gives them it gives like blind people more power and like it it helps more like it really yeah, does, right. and, I, and I, I think that you're both right in that social media, you know, is, is a, a, a bigger, badder thing than I'm going to call the cops. Or, 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 you know, the things we used to think as being the, the worst threat ever. Well, now it's social media, and you can use it. Yeah. And, and you can also use it when you have fabulous service, and you, have, and you feel like you're really welcomed. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can use it the same way and say this is the most outstanding, you know, business because they've, they've been so welcoming and they've been so, made me, been so accommodating. 
And that's also really a powerful thing you can use social media for. Mm. I don't do social media. <laughs> I do it by proxy. <laughs> I'm trying to learn. Yeah. But I'm a dinosaur. I don't know. <laughs> Steve doesn't like it when I say that. But I, I, I do find myself a little bit overwhelmed by it at times. Um, but it, but it, is, it, is a really good, it is a really good tool. And I, I also like that through social media and through other types of um, groups, you know, I, I'm now... I can be in contact with, with guide dog users all over the country, even all over the world. And for some of us, we know other people who are guide dog users, but sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're out there on your own going, my gosh, am I the only one dealing with these things? And if you can be connected to other people, you can get ideas, you can sort of plan. And Steve, you touched on it too. You, you um, don't necessarily, it doesn't happen, you're not prepared. I, on the other hand, sort of always in the back of, I try to go through like all of my worst case scenarios and have a preparation in mind. So, of course, when you do that, you never plan for what really happens. But for me, that helps me to not cut, be caught so off guard if something happens. I, somewhere in the back of my mind, I've, got, I've run through that scenario and I have sort of an idea at least of what I would, what I would do. Um, one of the things that this all makes me think about and leads me to is we all here live, you know, different lives. We do different things. We have a, a busy worlds that keep us traveling all over the, our own neighborhoods or out into the greater community or even, you know, nationally and internationally. But we also are all here tonight on a television program that I'm desperately trying to get to teach the general public about things that I think are really important. And I'm wondering if you all have things, something that you would really like everyone to know. If you, could, if you could jump right into their living room right now and say, I really need you to know this, what would it be? And it's okay if everyone has the same thing. That would actually be kind of interesting. I swear I didn't give them this question ahead of time, everyone. <laughs> so they all have the same thing. It was not planned. But what, what do you think that would be? About guide dogs. About, yeah, about guide dogs or being a guide dog. Yes, thank you for, I'm really glad you said that. Yeah, I would, I'm really glad you said that. Yes, what would you like them to know? What's the most, what, what would you really like them to know about, about guide dogs or you as a guide dog handler? Not you personally, but you know, what you would want them to know if you could say one thing to them. Well, for me, I would say um, there's a fine line between um, a disabled person needing help and being helpless. So for friends, family, and strangers, it's always good to ask somebody, and even with your guide dog, if you might need some assistance or guidance, but not to, um, I have people think, don't people that don't really get it that the dog helps me, <laughs> and the dog guides me and the dog knows to stop, you know, at the stairs or the, a hole in the sidewalk and, and people get overprotective. I'm glad they care, but there's a fine line there that they, I would want people to know that the dog does know what they're doing and are, generally speaking, competent. That's all I, I you know, it's hard to, yeah. to get that that fine line. Uh, There's that offering assistance, but then listening. Mm -hmm. You know, you're offering assistance doesn't mean grabbing the leash out of my hand and dragging me across the seven lane intersection I just got across. Yeah, that that's not offering assistance. Yeah. <laughs> that's being invasive. <laughs> right. Like when I'm coming, when I'm trying to go off of a curb or on, very often people will grab my arm when I have the dog is yeah. doing yeah. what they're supposed to do. They grab my arm, afraid I'm going to fall. So I don't know. The only thing that I would uh, ask for you to not do is tell me that you know you're not supposed to pet my dog <laughs> while you're petting it. Uh -huh. And A, think yep. that I don't know, and B, like, I don't know. That, that. So, but, but here's the, the point. I don't know, a a Andrea may have had a, a, a show on this, but a lot of people don't realize why. They think you're just being a jerk. Like, oh, you're a big meanie, you don't want my kid to pet your dog. <laughs> and here's the reason, I wrecked my first dog, really essentially, because I let everyone pet him. This Only was the, the girls? This was the, dog, this was the dog that I, yeah, I got the, <laughs> the girls at college, so. Uh, <laughs> but you know, the thing is, is that the, the dog is, when they're in the harness, they make this clear 
delineation, I'm working, I'm in my harness. When they're out of the harness, they're a dog. And so if they know that you'll pet the dog, if the dog sees, oh, there's John, and John always pets me. So he'll forget that there's a flight of stairs in between us or a curb or whatever and just go to see John. And so that becomes a safety thing. And at the end of the day, I just care far more about my ankle than I do about your need to pet a cute dog. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'd ask for you to think of it kind of in that way as a safety way. You're putting me at risk. Uh, because you want to pet my dog, it, you know, uh, that's just not worth it. If it's a huge deal to you and you really want to figure it out, uh, I'll give you my PayPal information. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, Nick, you're touching on something, and I and I I find that people don't seem to want to listen to me when I say that. And so I started saying, if there was someone in this room in a wheelchair, would you go and dump them out of their wheelchair? And they're just aghast that I would even ask them such a question. And I say, well, okay, so you wouldn't do that. Their wheelchair is their way of, mo of being mobile. You wouldn't throw them on the floor and take their chair away. Then don't touch my dog. Mm -hmm. Because my dog is my eyes. And by touching my dog, you're basically making me blind all over again. And that should be just as abhorrent to you as dumping someone out of their wheelchair onto the floor. You could also make the exception, I will allow someone to pet my dog if I can pinch their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it. I like that. It usually stops them. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Well, you know what? The problem is a lot of people don't understand why does petting the why yeah. petting I know. The dog I understand that. Danger. So I say now sometimes because I don't want the dog to get excited. Dogs love people. If you pet them, they're going to get excited and that, then not watch out for me or listen to my commands. I mean, that says a lot. That's a lot to say. It's way more polite than how I do it. Well, <laughs> that's what I try to explain why petting is not good. Yep. Yeah. How about you, Gannon? What would you tell everyone? You're hungry. You're a college student. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it's about being a guide dog user. Let's not forget that. Mine would be like, this is for like, just because I'm, I have experienced this now on a college campus a lot, is for people that like, they, 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 I don't know how to word it, but like, it's people like bikers and skateboarders annoy me very. Um. It's like, because they don't like, they only think about themselves. They don't think about other people as like pedestrians. They only see themselves as the only people out there, and they don't watch out for other people. Because I've had many times on campus where I've almost been hit by a skateboard. Yeah, well, and, and, and that can work. I mean, it I also had... it also like she doesn't like it. Like she will no. basically go in the, on the grass right. and wait till they pass. Absolutely. I had someone on a skateboard bump into the, as we were crossing a street. Because of course my dog stopped at the mm -hmm. crosswalk. Right. Someone hit him in the back of his legs. And then when I started to walk across the street, clearly wasn't going fast, they hit him again. I'm like, really? <laughs> Either you're totally blind on that skateboard and you don't know that you just hit something or you're just being a jerk. Um, but it is true and it can be scary. The dogs are taught to keep us away from moving obstacles. Well, a skateboard and a bicycle yeah. are, are traffic mm -hmm. to our dogs. Yeah. So they need to stop and, and move us out of the way. But if they're moving too fast and those are on the sidewalk, it's yeah. a really tough situation for the dog to work through. How about you, Steve? Okay. I would say that there are several of us people here today. We all have guide dogs. We all use our dogs to help us be independent. But the way that we were trained to use our dogs and the way that we use our dogs and how our dogs work for us is a very individual thing. So if someone sees me working my dog and then sees Nick working his dog and says to someone, well, Steve, Steve's dog is not doing its job as good as Nick's dog. I think people have to understand that every one of us, A, we have different visual acuity and therefore our dog was matched with us by a school that takes very much pride and it's very important to them that they find just the right dog for us and that just because we're all guide dog users we're not molded or lumped into one category everybody in this room works a dog in a little bit of a different way because it's what works for them and it's what gives them success and so people should not look at us and think that one of us is a better or worse dog handler or dog user that i i think that's very important Thank you. That's a really important that point. And it's very yeah. true because 
just like everyone seems to think that guide dogs are machines and they never make a mistake and they never, you know, um, need to be reminded about something, it's true that we all are different and, and some school came along and made a decision that we were the right person to work a dog and they are just like we're individuals and we're all different, our dogs are all different and they do work differently and, and they need different information and input from us and um, I think that's a really important point and, and thank you. Um, and since I get to do this because it's my show, my message, since you guys have all said all the other stuff that I wanted to say, <laughs> is please, 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 if you are a person who owns a dog and, it's, and you are in the space of a working dog, keep your dog to yourself and your dog out of my dog's business. Hmm. My dog doesn't want to be friends with your dog when it's working, nor is that appropriate. Letting your dog at the end of a a flexible leash, a long extendable leash, not having control of your dog, assuming that your dog can just come up and you know, interact with mine because obviously my dog wants to be friendly, he's a guide dog, none of that is appropriate. My dog has friends who are dogs and he's a very friendly dog. When he's working, the last thing he needs is a dog in his business. And unlike dogs that are off to be social, he needs to not be distracted. And it's hard if there's another dog and it's barking and wagging at him, um, that's hard for him to ignore. So all of you out there, the humans, can help by keeping your dog out of the space of my working dog. And certainly also to understand that of all of my dogs, I've had six, he's the only one that hasn't had a negative situation where a dog has interacted with him in a way that was potentially retiring. People, I, I use the word dog attack, and I'm told that's too strong a word. My dogs have never been physically hurt by the dogs that interacted with them. But one of them was upset enough by the situation that he lost his ability to focus on his work when he, was a, when, he, when he saw a dog he didn't know, and he was retired at four and a half. I then had a $60,000 pet. He was fabulous, but he was not supposed to be a pet at four and a half. He was supposed to be a guide dog. And every time I hear a dog and it's loose or it's unatt unattended, I had one of my dogs was jumped outside of a store because he, there was an unattended dog. My dog was doing his job. He was, I had no idea there was a dog there because he was ignoring the dog. And then we got into that dog's space and my dog, there was a dog all over my dog. And it was terrifying for me and for my dog. Um, so please, please be responsible, respectful dog owners and keep your dog out of the personal space of a working dog. That is my, my plea. Yes, it's a major distraction. It is. It's very hard. They're not perfect. They're not machines. And it's scary. And it's scary for them because they've been taught to watch out for us. And so now there's this dog that's all over them. And they're probably not going to react the way you think by being, you know, many of them won't be aggressive toward that dog because first of all, their first concern is their handler. And secondly, they're, they're, they've been socialized and bred to be very social animals. They may or may not protect themselves. And all of that is complicated by the fact that they're on duty and their first responsibility is to their handler. We're keeping your fingers out, our fingers out of your eyes. Keep your dogs away from ours. Yes. Is that, is that the bottom <laughs> That's what I want. Exactly. Precisely. That is precisely the point. What have I not touched on that any of you feel is important in, in any other area that, that is um, something you'd like to make sure gets out there or you'd like to talk about that this conversation has sparked for you? I would like to say that, you know, everybody thinks, I remember I used to know a person who was always asked, why don't you get a guide dog? And the person goes, I could never be that mean to a dog and have to work it. Honestly, these dogs are bred to, to want to work. They love working. But aside from all the work, they are also dogs and they like to do dog things and they, they do get into dog trouble, like around <laughs> the house. And I love my dog very much. He loves his ball. And... Just the relationship that I have with him is unexplicably wonderful. And as an animal, I respect him and I trust him, but I also don't feel that having a guide dog is degrading it at all to a dog. I think, I think his life is just as enriched as mine is. Thank you, Stephen. That's a really important point. A lot of people think that my dog is never off duty because of course they never see him off duty because they see me in the grocery store, or they see me at the local you know, restaurant and so they think he works 24 seven. He doesn't, none of these dogs work 24 hours. People will say, well, does he help you around your house? Well, I would encourage any of you to think about getting around your house um, 
you don't really need to see to get around your own house because it's, it's where you live. The, the, you're very familiar with that environment. As soon as I get home, my dog goes off duty. And this dog, when he goes off duty, is really off duty. It's amazing how fast <laughs> that happens with him. Um, but then he gets to be a dog. He gets to play. He's got you know, toys. He gets to go on play dates with his other friends and, and, and be a crazy dog and do dog things, just like you said, Steve. And that's critical not only because everybody deserves No one wants to go to work 24 hours a day, <laughs> seven days a week. That's no fun. And also, um, it's important to be able to have the time to play. I think they all work better when they get to be off duty and have, have fun and be dogs that way too. Yes. Um, we're, we're coming to the end of this episode and I wanna thank you all so much for being here. Before I wrap this up and before I send you all off to your various meetings and classes and stuff that you have to do tonight, um, anything else that anyone wants to say? Nicholas. Thanks to, thanks to the camera people. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you. Jared, Thank you. Whoever else is over there <laughs> inviting us. Yes. Yeah. I'm so glad this this series has meant so much to me, and I always envisioned that the very last, sort of the wrapping up, the culmination of it would be having people to interview who are guide dog users, who other than me, of course, I do interview myself <laughs> occasionally on my show, um, but I think the public gets really tired of that. Um, but I, uh, but at least I know exactly what I'm going to get when I interview myself, right? I, there's not going to be any random unexpectedness from, from when I interview myself. Um, but I, I, I love this particular gathering of people because you all come from such different places in, in, and yet we all have this incredible commonality of being guide dog users. And, it, and it's a fabulous um, group, tribe, membership to be a part of. <laughs> And I'm just so pleased that you could all be here. And I want to thank the audience for being um, along on this journey of this, this series, Pup Person and Pup to Partners. <laughs> we've, we've covered it all. We, we, we did that journey, and it's an amazing one. And I'm so grateful to be on it yet again with dog number six. And hopefully he'll work for 30 years. I keep telling him that. <laughs> um, we, he hasn't quite agreed yet, but I'm working on it. I I'm, I'm keep, I'm keep hoping it'll work. Um, and again, to Randa and Nicholas and Gannon and Steve, thank you so much for being my guests and um, everyone for, for tuning in. This is As I See It, A Blind Woman's View, and I am your host, Andrea Judici. I'm here with my guide dog, who I'm choosing not to introduce for all of the reasons that we've talked about tonight or today, and thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great month. <laughs>